14 kind of goes along with that when David said this when the people came and offered the gifts that they had to God and David offered gifts to God and offerings and this is what David said these things did not really come from me or my people but who I am and who are my people that we have this much to give Everything comes from you. This is David talking to God. We have given you back what you have given us. Isn't that amazing? What a good God we serve. Amen. Let's make our confessions together. How many believe that God is a good God and He is the giver of everything we got? We wouldn't have anything to just worship Him with today and give if He had not given it to us. So let's just give God a praise for all the things that He has done. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's make our confessions. Heavenly Father, we're believing You for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, Appointments and promotions, interest and income, increase and inheritance, ownerships and possessions, gifts and surprises, and I need to insert right here scholarships and grants for those that are in school. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. Finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, healing for our mind, healing for our body. Healing for our spirit, faithful church members, and so saved into the kingdom of God. Lord, your word has told us you give us everything. And what we do give is only what you have given us. We're just giving what you've given us back to you. And Lord, we thank you that we are in covenant with you to give and to worship you in this offering. And we thank you for what you're doing. Lord God, here on planet Earth, we thank you for what you're doing right here in Morton and in our lives and all the lives of the people that are gathered here today and are joining us in the parking lot and listening over Facebook Live. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, we wouldn't have anything if it weren't for you. God, we thank you. And Lord, you said freely you have received. We are receivers and you're a giver. And you said then freely give and so we we freely give to you we're only giving back to you david said what you've given to us and if if we have anything if it's abundant or if it's a little lord god it all came from you anyway it belongs to you and lord god there's no way to out give our god you'll never be out given because you said, give and it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. So, Lord God, we give, Lord Jesus, cheerfully and thankfully and with much gratitude because you've blessed us so. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, Amen. Let's have our offering march.
everything that, that it takes to have a program like that. Let's give them a hand right now. We thank you for your service to the Lord, ministry to our children and our youth. Praise the Lord. So on Wednesday night, uh, our classes uh, won't be held because we want to give uh, plenty of time for them to practice and get the program ready. Uh, take a little pressure off. They're going to have dress rehearsal. They're going all out. And uh, we thank God for everybody that makes that happen. So, so many that 
comes in during this time. Isn't it good to have stuff like that? I enjoyed watching the, the parade. I had Levi, a two-year-old, and he was just to watch him see the lights, and Santa Claus hit him with candy right in the face, and, and he didn't even care. <laughs> Uh, he didn't want anything but the suckers, so I got suckers out of all that candy and, and didn't even get trampled for it. So um, we thank God for everything that that has been done thus far and what's going to be done. And thank you for making that happen. Being a covenant partner with us makes things like that happen in the church. That's ministry, and we thank God for you. Today, I want to talk about fighting for what God has given us. It kind of sounds strange when you say that. When you say, you got to fight for what God's given you. But I just want to talk about what the Bible says about Christians being spiritual warriors and, and, and having to fight for what God give, has given them and has promised them. So we're going to look at Joshua. Did we lose it? Okay, there it is. Joshua 1 and 3. It says, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you. He's talking to Joshua. And listen to what he says. He's given it to him. God gave it to Joshua and his people. As I said unto Moses, so he is just repeating a promise that he made to Moses. He is, it's a generational promise. He just passed it down. Moses' time has has expired. Now he is making it to the generation that's come up after Moses. Aren't you glad there's no expiration date on your promise? What he did for my grandpa, my momo, when they carried the Gospels in the 30s and 40s, in tents, they had two tents. They had a tent to sleep in and a tent to preach in. But God's kept his promises. We've come a long way and he's blessed us. And we just got to keep on believing God like they did. And God's going to do it. Listen to what it says. 1 Timothy 6. New Testament stuff here now. Fight the good fight of faith. Everybody shout, you got to fight. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. Listen, he says, you're called to lay hold on these things and to fight the good fight of faith and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before uh, Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. How long did he say you're going to have to fight? Till Jesus comes. Everybody shout, you still in it? And that we still got some fighting to do. So God's given us the command, and we've got to keep His commandments. Amen? To do His will in the earth today. Let's make our confession. I will believe God's Word. I will be who it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. To God be the glory forever and forever. And everybody shouted, Amen. You may be seated today. Fight for what God has given us. The Bible says that... He made the same promise he had given to Moses. He made that to the next generation and to the next and to the next and to the next. So God's promise does not have an expiration date on it. How many know today that the Bible says that the promises of God are yea and in him amen? He settled that. He said, I haven't changed. He said, God doesn't say yes and then no. That's what Paul, that was the, what he was writing about. God didn't change his mind, but they're yes and in him, amen. And so he has not changed his mind about what his word said. He didn't get to the 21st century and look at his word and say, you know, it's, you know that was written for you know, a, a millennial ago or many centuries ago. I, you know, I, I really hadn't finished with... My plan for, no, no, no. I want to tell you, his plan's already settled. It's settled in his word, and his word is forever settled in the heavens. And I want to tell you, his word, his promises, and his power is still relevant today. But we've got to accept what he says about his word. What did he say? 
he said, fight the good fight of faith. It's kind of funny. When I read about Joshua and what God said, I give you this and I've given it to Moses. 31 battles later, 31 battles later, Joshua and the people of God possessed the land. 31 battles later. Let it sink in. God says, I'm giving it to you. Now, 31 battles later. Now, isn't that somehow God, he don't talk about the battles he just talks about what he's given us. And then he says, now you got to believe it. Caleb and Joshua believed God when he said, go up in the promised land before the people of Israel were turned back into the wilderness for 40 years. He said, we are more than able to take the land. We are more than able to destroy the giants. We're more than able because God's already given it to us. And we just got to believe. We just got to go up. But the Bible says the other ten spies gave an evil report. They didn't believe it, did they? They didn't have faith. So what makes it worth today? What makes it work? What makes the plans of God be activated in our life? Faith. You've got to have faith in Jesus. You've got to have faith that God's still God and that there is no expiration date on His promises. Amen? Because in heaven forever and ever and ever, we're going to enjoy His promises. Amen? But we've got some things that God wants us to do today. And so we've got to get ready to do battle and to do warfare. The Bible tells us that Paul believed in warfare, and he wrote about it. He looked at the Roman soldiers, and he was very familiar with them. He saw them a lot. He was one on one side, was chained to his wrist, and the other one on it was chained to, chained to his left wrist, one on, with his right wrist, and he spent a lot of time. And they tell me the Roman government had to change out the, 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 the soldiers who watched after Paul in his arrest because he was getting them, he was bringing them to Jesus are so fast that they couldn't leave them there too long. They were trying to figure out now, how long can we leave these soldiers with him before they give their heart to Jesus? And they were trying to figure out not to give him that much time because if they gave him too much time, two more soldiers was going to be saved. Hey! And one to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, God still winning the battle today. He is. And so faith conquers everything in Jesus. His promises are yes. So he said this, Every place to Joshua, the sole of thy foot shall tread. There's a hint what you got to do. You got to walk in it. Where you walk, I'm giving it to you. There's so many people, and I talk to young ministers a lot, and they say, I'm just waiting on my opportunity let me tell you there's so many opportunities in the world to do ministry i started out with a jail ministry i remember at my first church i wasn't doing a lot of evangelistical work we were out way out in the country and i had a guy who had a cousin who was a jailer in uh, in the pearl river county jailing system and so they were looking for people to come and preach they didn't have many people and I had a guy all the way from Picayune. I was in uh, Popperville, but he was coming from Picayune to do. And he was a Church of God minister, and I knew him, so I talked to him. Let's coordinate our services. We're going to team up on you. Well, it wasn't long. We got permission to go in, and I want to tell you what. I've never been put in jail before. I'm not like some of you that we, you know, before the Lord saved you. I was. <laughs> uh, thank God, I probably should have been there, but praise the Lord, He saved me from it, and I didn't have to spend any time in jail. So well, that was my first time in prison. That was my first time in jail. And I want to tell you, there was a, there was a cell. It was, a, it was an open area. It wasn't very big. Probably maybe half as big as this stage or maybe less than that. And there was 10 cells around it. That's where they were held. And they said, the, the guy walks you in and he slams the big door behind you and he locks it. And, uh, and you're thinking, I'm in here all by myself. I thought I was going to, and all of a sudden, those other doors swing open, all 10 of them, and here comes the guys that I've got to preach to. That's a weird feeling, I want to tell you. But you know what? There were a lot of preachers that were talking about, I don't ever get revivals, and I don't ever get the opportunity to preach. And I'm thinking, oh, I sure wish I'd have brought them with me tonight. But we did that, and before long, we got some trustees. And we were we got permission to bring them to church. We had about ten trustees. Most of them were from Cuba, 
And I appreciated God giving me the opportunity to meet these guys. They were beautiful uh, 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 Cuban men, had a beautiful spirit. They had given their heart to Jesus. One of them was, was called El Capitan. He was missing an eye. Uh, one of the uh, uh, rebellions in Cuba, he he was a captain actually in the police force there. He was on the wrong side, and when they took over, he he got to beat up and his eye shot out. Capitan is what we called him. Yeah, that's kind of bad, isn't it? When you but you know he took a Bible, a little bitty Bible about the size of this foam, a little Gideon Bible, and he held it up, and he said, "This is twenty years." In Cuba right now, in the in the communist country of Cuba, you have a Bible just this size, and and I didn't think to ask him. I said, "Well, how long is it if you had one this size?" I didn't know if they went by, you know, sizes. That's how long you were going to stay. But this gave they gave you twenty years. No, no excuses. They didn't write a ticket. They didn't give you a warning. This communist ruler uh, threw people in prison for having a little bitty Gideon Bible this size of this foam. And, uh, you know, those guys, they understood what war was, having a fight, the good fight. They believed the Lord Jesus. And the reason they were trustees is because they came over illegally and they were being held. But the jailers all trusted them. They were good guys. And they knew that. And they said, Preacher, we're going to just let you come and get them. So I, the jail that I went to at my first church, had my first jail ministry, was my first evangelical move in that in that county and in that city, the city of Poplarville, the very first time that we saw revival was among the Cubans. And they would come. And when we had them one day, Brother Chris, we had them for Easter. And I said, we want you to come to Easter with us. And we had a big spread of food. And, and, and they were upset because, they, you know, they couldn't bring anything because, you know, they were, they were incarcerated. And they would let them out. And we'd put them in cars. We didn't have a van, so we just got enough cars to come get them. And we would bring them to church, all 10 of them. And so we had an Easter egg hunt. And they said, oh, man, they were all, these are grown men now. They were all excited about being a part of the Easter egg hunt. We had a gravel park, parking lot. And they let them be in charge. I thought it was so funny that these grown men wanted to be a part of the kids' Easter, uh, you know, egg hunt. They wanted to hide the eggs. So they let them hide the eggs. You know, we never found some of those eggs. Nobody explained to them that the object is these are little kids and you don't want to like hide them to where nobody can find them. You know, and living in a, in a communist country, they were used to that, hiding their Bible where nobody could find it but them, hiding their money. Nobody could find it but them, hiding everything, weapons, everything. And so they had the idea, we're going we're gonna to fix this. We're, you're never going to, and you know what? Our parking lot, we didn't think about it, but they dug holes in the gravel and planted some of those. Now, they, we didn't use plastic eggs. We used the real eggs, all right? So our parking lot was like a minefield for a long time. When those eggs started rotting and people started running over them, everybody said, what's that smell? I don't know. Well, we found out later that some of those guys went out there, and I mean they buried Easter eggs in the parking lot, the gravel parking lot, and that's what the stink was. I want you to know those guys understood what it was to fight for their faith. They understood what it was to, to have the freedom that we do. And they so enjoyed coming to church because we gave them a Bible and they could carry it back to jail with them. And, and, and whether well, they were already in jail, they couldn't get thrown in jail. But they, at least they wouldn't have to, you know, because of their Bible. And uh, many of them got released and some of them got their citizenship and some of them went back. To, to Cuba to carry the gospel. I want you to know you have got to walk in what God has given you. I didn't realize, sister, that God had given me those men in that jail. I didn't know it. You know, I, I would like to think that it was just God that put that in, all the opportunities. I was looking for that. But there were lay people that said, you know, I got a friend or I got a cousin. And they, and they said they need some help out there in the jail. And uh, I didn't realize I had a call for that. I'd never done it before. I, I'd never experienced anything like that. And let me tell you, when they slam that big door behind you, you are thankful that God kept you out of that place. But, and when those doors came open, one night a guy was mad because somebody had picked on him. And um, 
and he was a mean one. And he come out with an extension cord. He was slinging the extension cord. I think I, I was saying, Lord, just don't let him get me. He can have any of them, especially the saved ones. But just don't let him use it on me. You know, I was before I understood how to do karate, you know, <laughs> and self-defense. And I, I was just a country boy. And I was trying to be a good guy. He was coming out slinging that cord. He was throwing it around, and he was hitting it. And, and, and I just started talking. I said, hey, what's wrong? Can I help you? He said, man, I can't nobody help me. And um, I said, well, I said, have you ever been to church? He said, I don't even want to talk about church. I don't want to talk about preachers. My dad was a preacher. He was a and blah, blah. he had all kinds of terrible things to say. And I just started praying with, talking to him and having an opportunity to pray. Well, just let me pray. You don't say anything. Just let me pray. We were in that cell. Now, all these other guys, you know, it's hard to do with everybody listening. The, the same people that you're in the cell block with, and you kind of got to, you know, listen to that. And uh, he broke down that night, and we prayed, and he cried. He received the Lord Jesus Christ that night. And I mean, he hated church. He hated Christianity. He hated everything. He was raised in a situation. I don't know what happened. I'm not sure what went on in his life, but he ended up there. And I saw all the anger just melt off of his life because I didn't know that that's where I was supposed to be walking and he gave me started walking in something I didn't even know he had given me and things happened let me tell you something God has given the church a lot of things we just got to have enough faith to start walking in faith and believe in God so there's a lot of things God expecting us to move well I'm waiting on God well maybe God's waiting on me Maybe I need to start walking in some ministry and other things will begin to happen in our life. Joshua heard God say, wherever the sole of your feet touches, that, he said, you tread there, you walk there, I have given that to you. Well, let's take that as it is. He, he has not given me that place. He said, now listen. This was a lot to do. God had given him the boundaries, and he had told them where he wanted them to walk. I wish God would lay that out for us real clear like he did for them. He laid out their boundaries so clearly. If you look in God's Word, guess what? You'll find out where God has laid out your borders. Jabez had borders that were not God's borders. Other enemies had imposed those borders on his life. He knew God had boundaries and borders and coastlines that he was not occupying. His enemy said, no, no, no. You are right here. You are right here. They, this is where you stay, right here, Jabez. Jabez said, I'm tired of being where God said this is a limitation. This is not, this is, this is something that God... He promised me more than this, a, a larger area of this. And he said, if my feet walk there, he said, I will have it because he's given it to us. And they knew those boundaries and those borders. But his enemy had come and said, no, we're, we want this. We're going to give you this little bit right here. Let me tell you, God can change tight places with people that are no longer accepting what the devil says they have to have and the life the devil says that they have to live and the things that they have to accept. It's time for people to say, I'm not putting any limits on God and I'm not letting my enemies put any limits on me. When God says I can, I will be what he says I can be. I will do what he says I can do. Somebody shout yes. So 31 battles later, they occupied the promises of God. I want you to come, Jacob. Thank you for helping us this morning. And Timothy says that this is a fight. We talked about Paul looking at the Roman soldier. He looked at the Roman soldier and he said, put on the heaven of salvation. He says, stand with your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why did he put the gospel on our feet? Why did he say preparation of the gospel? Why did he put that there? Because God never sends us anywhere to walk in faith that he hadn't prepared us for. His word has got it covered. Everywhere my feet go, God sends me. His word has got it covered. 
My feet are covered with the word. I have permission to walk. The devil don't like it. The enemy don't like it. The world don't like it. Why do you say, how beautiful are the feet of them that carry the gospel of peace? Why did Isaiah write that? Why did Paul reflect on that? What, why, what's so important about where I walk? Because he said, we walk by faith and not by sight. My feet don't see anything. My feet don't hear anything. No, but my eyes. See, God didn't put the preparation of the gospel of peace in my eyes and my ears. <laughs> because there's a lot of things goes on before my eyes and in my ears and in my head. That's why he said you got to pull down every stronghold. Where stronghold? 2 Corinthians 10 says, every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. My feet don't think. They just go where I tell them to go. Do you know where the real battle is? It's right here. What I think. I've got to tell my feet where to walk. So I need to get in this word so my feet will know where to go. They don't know where to go unless you tell them. And you won't know where to go and what you have in the Lord unless you hear God tell you. And the reason he said walk by faith and not by sight because our life is not always laid out for us. There's a lot of surprises. It's not a surprise to God. It's a surprise to him. And here he says, it'll be here a little and there a little. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Just like you build a brick wall, one brick at a time. God don't lay everything out for me. He don't build everything, lay everything out. Give me a big old drawn map to where I can say, I know where I'm going to be 10 years from now. I know where I'm going to be 24 hours from now. I know, you know what he has, what he does? He gives you a brick at a time and he's going to see what you're going to do with your brick. Are you moving brick by brick, line by line, Precept by precept by faith. I want to know the end before I even begin. Hey, is anybody in here with me? I'm just that way. I get nervous when I don't know what's at the end. That's why I believe God had to give us revelation. I read the back of the book. I know how the story ends. Hey, the Hensons used to say, any way you slice it, center my advice is you got to be a Christian to win. That's what the Hensons used to say. I was raised here in the back of the book. And I know my end is in glory and in eternity. And I didn't, I didn't fight to get saved. Jesus did my fighting for me. And my salvation is by grace. It's not anything that I've done. All I had to do is accept it by faith. And I was saved. And I have His Holy Spirit. All the gifts of the Spirit, a gift is something I can't buy, I can't purchase. I, all of those things are given. They're free. But let me tell you, let me tell you, after salvation, and after you get all the good things that are free from God, there's some fighting you're going to have to do here on planet Earth. When we cross over, the fighting is over. My battle is won. I can lay down my helmet of salvation, my, my breastplate of righteousness. I can take off my shoes of readiness. I can unbuckle my belt. How many unbuckles their belt after a good meal and goes get in the lazy bowl when you get a chance and take a nap. Boy, that's going to be a long one up there. We can take all of that gear off because my battle is over. For As far as we know, I don't know a whole lot about what they do up there, but, but, but right now I know what we got to do down here. And that is we've got to gird ourselves and put on the whole armor of God because I got saved because Jesus won on Calvary's hill for and he provided that free gift. It's a gift. It's neither earned nor deserved. The gifts of the Spirit, they're gifts. God gives us by the Spirit. But after that, you better put on your armor. You better gird yourself and get ready for battle.
because the devil won't, like Jabez, the devil wants to say, you can't have that. You can't have it. I know the Bible says this, and I know the Lord has bigger things, but you can't have it. You're going to have to stay right here, and he'll draw your lines for your life for you. And you have to read in God's Word and let the Bible be, and believe it and let the Bible start talking to you. And then you start walking. You tell your feet. I heard of one guy, he got afraid and he had to run. And he said, feet don't fail me now. Your feet won't fail you. They'll go. Where you in faith, tell them to go. You got to pull down the strongholds that's keeping you from walking in what God has for you. So God's really not waiting on us. He's waiting on us. I don't know how many battles. Joshua didn't know there was 31. If God tells us everything, we'll quit before we even get started. If He tells us how big things are going to be when we have to face them, we will probably not even start. He knows us. He knows our limitations. So He gives us one brick at a time, one precept at a time for our life. You read the Bible, God sometimes just gives one line out of a whole paragraph. And I mean, it just comes out and it gets you. The Bible says we prophesy in part. We look through a glass darkly. We don't see everything. We get a few words from the Word of God. The Spirit of God quickens our life. God sends somebody to pray over our life or speak over our life. And we get some words. You better hold on to them. You better get on a hold of them tight. Because the devil's going to come and try to steal your word. And you got to fight. He'll try to steal your word. He'll try to steal your promise. He'll try to steal what God's spoken over your life. And you got to fight. That's where our fight is. Joshua had 31 battles before he could say, we possess this. God gave it to us, but we got to fight for it. I believe God is raising up a generation of faithful fighters because it ain't easy no more. It used to be so easy to come to church. I have never in my life, I didn't realize how easy it was. I didn't know how easy it was to do things. I, w I had really taken it for granted. But then what happened? Man, all hell broke loose. And all of a sudden, all this was taken from us. And now we were challenged. What we took for granted wasn't there anymore. And, and I'm going to tell you, I got afraid. I mean, he's with me. I got afraid. I got afraid. What we used to, we had a job. We thought, man, I got a job. God's blessed me with a job. All of a sudden, I don't even know if I'm going to have a job. Maybe it's been suspended. Some people got furloughed. We didn't know on this side, this far down the road, that we were going to be all right. Some people weren't. Many of our loved ones, many people of faith, has gone on to be with, to, with God in glory today through all of this trouble. And our heart breaks because of that. But as far as us, we didn't know we were going to be okay at this point, did we? But see, God did. He knew because He's got a plan. And we've got to trust Him. And give our life to it. Let's all stand all over the building. He told Him, you've got to walk in it and you've got to be strong and courageous. And do not be afraid or tremble in dread before them. Dreadful. And I know there's a, there's a thing of fear. And, and you know, it's, everybody feels a level of fear. But he said, this kind of fear, this, this fear here is the Hebrew word that God uses in reverence to him. That's the level he's talking about in a negative way. The enemy will come with that kind of intensive attack of fear and dread. His fear is reverence to God. That's the same word he uses when he says, fear the Lord. And we know that's a good word for those who love the Lord and know Him because we have no fear with the Lord. Our fear is reverence and respect to our Heavenly Father. We're saved by grace. We know our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We love Him. God is love. All those things. That, and we're not a, we respect Him as a Father. And He will chasten them.
those that He loves. We know that. And we don't want to be chastened, but we do want to be corrected when we need it because that's what God is. He's a loving Father. He's not going to just let us go our own way and, and be destroyed and bring harm on ourselves. He'll try to chasten and correct us and get us back on the right path. We understand that kind of reverence, that word. But here, it is used when the enemy is trying to use it. That same intensity. And he says, don't you listen to him and don't you listen to them when they're trying to come at you as if they're God and that they have the strength and power that God does. He says, you got to be strong and courageous. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm not going to feel fear? No, that's not what it means. It means you're going to overcome it. We're more than conquerors. Greater is he that is in us. He put that in there because he knew we were going to feel it. He said, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. How many want that sound mind today? Man, fear and dread comes to take your mind. But let me tell you, Jabez said, no, you're not going to push me into that dark room. He said, I want you to enlarge my coastlines, God. The enemy say I can't have it, but your word has promised that I can enlarge my boundaries and, and expand my borders. Remember that? It became very popular. We need to bring it back and we need to start speaking it over our life because we're not going to be pushed into a room of fear because we've got to be courageous because it takes courage to walk in faith and not what we see let's pray god help our faith today lord god help us be good fighters you said war a good warfare paul wrote to timothy that you may war a good warfare help us war a good warfare lord we know lord god that you saved us we know that you put your spirit in our life we know we have the free gifts of the holy ghost and lord god we have the fruits of the spirit and we have your great salvation for our life we know you gave it to us when we made you our lord and our savior but god battles come and we need to have courage and we need to be strong and we need to not allow the devil to determine what our boundaries are but let us listen to God whatever heads bowed never eyes closed I heard a psychologist being interviewed by a reporter and he said this is how uh, psychiatrically he was a doctor this is how little by little your freedoms get taken away he says, what they do, they come against you and you say no, no, no to them, those that are trying to take your freedoms. And he says, when you start protesting, they back off and then they come back to the same place to see what you're going to do this time. And they'll re-enter your life and start coming against that same area until they get uh, okay, yes, until you give them permission. And then they move on to another battle line. And with every, every time a person does that and gives away a part of their freedom, this is a person, a psychiatrist, a, a doctor of psychiatry talking. He says, every time we do that, we lose another layer of freedom. And then they come back and they keep on. And then there's a protest and they back off and they come back to that line. And, and if they're not confronted, if they they get permission and, and they're granted permission to, to do what they come to do, to get you to agree to do, then they, they put up a, a stronghold there and they take it. And it, sometimes it's years. Do you know that idea comes straight from hell? Do you know that? That the devil will come and he'll come to the same point. He didn't get any ground there last time because you believe that the Lord said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And you kept binding it. 
And whenever you loose on earth, God's going to say, okay, you gave permission. I'm going to let it go because you gave permission. You loosed it. And we don't understand that. But the enemy understands it, church. So I'm calling for the people of God to stand. Paul said, when you've done everything you know to do, the enemy keeps coming. And he's coming after the same stuff. You just stand ready with the armor of God on you. And you withstand him. And you don't budge and you don't give an inch. And you don't give up. Because once you overcome him and he sees that you're not going to agree to allow him to have that part of your life, guess what? He's going to get discouraged and you're going to be able to advance and take some ground. I don't know if I'm talking to you this morning, but the Lord wants you to advance and take ground, but you've got to first learn how to be strong and courageous. I wonder if there's somebody today who say, I am drawing the line and I am not giving up another inch of my life. I'm not going to agree to give that away anymore. I believe that God's going to give me the strength to stand. And I need it. And I felt that temptation of fear and dread. But the Lord says, be of good courage. And don't fear. So I believe God and I'm holding on to those promises that I'm not going to cower away, but I'm going to stand strong through faith in Jesus' name. You're here and you say, that's me, Pastor. That's what I'm believing God for. That's what I'm praying to God for. That kind of strength to stand. Raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. That's me. I need to keep standing. I don't want to give up. I don't want to back up. I don't want to give an inch. I'm standing. I'm believing. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to believe God. He's going to give it to me. I want you to just, while your head, head's bowed and eyes closed, I want you to pray over everyone that said that's what they're doing. I want us to pray together for strength. Lord, you saw the hands that went up in this building. You know those in the parking lot who are in that position, who are claiming. Lord God, they're saying like Jabez, these boundaries, they're not your boundaries. These are the boundaries that the enemies have put upon me. But Lord God, I want you to enlarge my coastline. <laughs> I want you to enlarge their coastline today. We believe in God that you're going to expand their boundaries to the places that you've promised them, to the things that you've promised them. Yes, there's battles, but we're going to be strong and courageous and we're going to walk and you're going to give us the victory through faith. And we're going to see those things overcome we're not going to be overcome by those things. But we're not going to be conquered by those things. But we're going to be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. Lord, we're praying that on each one that raised their hand this morning. We're praying that you'll give them that. In Jesus' mighty and strong name. Put your hands together this morning. And give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You love the blessings of God's Word spoken over your life. I love it. It don't ever get old for me. I'm reading out of Numbers and Second Chronicles. I want to speak this over your life. Just stretch your hand this way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And everybody shouted, Amen. You have a blessed...